At today's innovation keynote, Intel announced their upcoming 12th gen core lineup. And finally, we got some first performance data, but of course directly from Intel and not confirmed by independent sources yet. If you are interested in every little detail that we got today, then the usual suspects like Hardware Unboxed or Gamers Nexus already put out their 20 minute long videos. I want to focus on the parts of the presentation that tell us something by, well, not giving us the full picture. Topics that companies are avoiding are way more interesting to me than things they put center stage. And as a small bonus, we will discuss some fresh leaks from today regarding gaming performance and the e-course. And I will explain why the i5-12400 might be the best gaming deal. <laughs> Let me start by saying that I'm still really excited about all the lake and Intel actually had some pretty transparent moments today. To no surprise, Intel announced the i9-12900K, i7-12700K and the i5-12600K together with their respective KFSKUs, which come with disabled integrated graphics due to binning. The core combinations are also confirmed again. 8 performance and 8 efficiency cores for the i9, 8P and 4E cores for the i7 and 6P and 4E cores for the i5. What's cool is that Intel finally states the Turbo TDP, since a lot of mainboards run Intel KCPUs in a constant turbo anyways. All CPUs have a base TDP of 125 watts, but with the turbo boost enabled, the i9 goes up to 241 watts, the i7 reaches 190 watts, and the i5 tops out at 150 watts. 10 points to Intel for transparency. But now let's move on to the good stuff. Intel comes out of the gate running by claiming world's best gaming processor, best overclocking experience and giant leap for content creation. Sounds good at first. They are clearly convinced that they can beat Zen 3 when it comes to gaming and since actually lying is a no-go for a publicly traded company, I think the independent reviews will confirm Intel's claim here. Not sure by how much, we will look at Intel's benchmarks in just a second, but they will snatch the gaming crown back, at least until Zen 3D. The next point is best OC experience and it has zero meaning. Intel just like AMD has clocked their CPUs to the limit out of the box for quite a while now and I doubt that Alder Lake will offer any higher OC headroom. Just marketing, ignore it. The next claim is interesting though. They don't claim world's best content creating processor and this tells us something. When it comes to content creating, AMD just might stay on top, especially with the 16 core 32 thread Ryzen 9 5950X. If Alder Lake would beat Zen 3 here, Intel would have told us. Now on to the gaming performance. Here Intel compares the i9-11900K versus the i9-12900K in some selected games. These are actually impressive gains and taking a look at the 32 game average, the picture seems to be solidified. Alder Lake will beat Rocket Lake quite handedly when it comes to gaming. The largest lead is League of Legends with a almost 50% performance increase. And the same thing we saw last year with Zen 3 and most likely down to the increased L3 cast size. Let's see how much of that performance boost the i5 will get with only 20 megabytes of L3 cache compared to the 30 megabytes in the i9 and 25 megabytes in the i7. Hardware Unbox just recently showed how important cache is for gaming. But beating their previous CPUs isn't as exciting as battling it out with the competition. And as you can see, out of the 9 selected games, the i9 12900K beats the Ryzen 9 5950X 7 times at least according to Intel. At first glance, this slide looks very good and transparent since Intel shows that it loses to AMD in Shadows of the Tomb Raider and they are tied in Crisis Remasters. And then the next 7 games show some really good performance gains from plus 8% in F1 2021 up to 30% in Troy. In these benchmarks, the 12900K is running with DDR5 4400 CL36 and the 5950X is using DDR4 3200 CL14, which is a fair comparison since that's the default spec for both. Yes, the Ryzen CPU would have been faster with DDR4-4000, but so would have been the i9 with DDR5-6600 for example. So far so good, right? Well no, because when we take a look at the footnotes, it becomes clear that Intel was using Windows 11 without the Zen 3 L3 cache bug fix. And before AMD released the new Windows 11 optimized chipset software that fixed the preferred core issue. Now, I'm also using a Ryzen based system and because I'm a bad boy who loves danger, I updated to Windows 11 on release. I was affected by both bugs and did some tests and while gaming performance did decrease, it wasn't as horrible as a lot of people claimed. So a post patch 5950X would perform a bit better here, but I think overall the picture wouldn't really change a lot. 
Next is application performance, and Intel also promises quite some leaps over the previous generation, with up to 100% performance gains for Alder Lake in selected benchmarks. But what did Intel not tell us? You guessed it, how Alder Lake performs versus Zen 3 in those applications. And this tells us that Alder Lake won't be able to beat a Ryzen 9 9950X when it comes to productivity, at least on average. I'm sure there will be tasks where Intel takes the lead, but overall it's very unlikely, since they would have rubbed it under our noses if they could achieve that. Now, before we get onto the leaks, I want to share a few slides with you that I found really interesting and that let all of it shine in a much better light. Intel gave us actual fixed clock IPC comparisons, and it's really amazing to see that the E cores deliver around the same IPC as their Skylake cores, which they used as their big cores until the 10900K. Of course, a 10900K would reach higher clock speeds, but this IPC is amazing. Golden Cove with plus 28% IPC over Skylake also looks good to me. Still, the little cores are taking the spotlight. And last but not least is power efficiency, and not even especially on the desktop. Yes, the 12900K delivers up to 50% more multi-threading power versus the 11900K at a similar powered level, but that would be expected with twice the cores. What's really interesting is that when locked at 65 watts, Autolink still delivers the same amount of multi performance as a 11900K at 250 watts. I think Alder Lake might be even more interesting when it comes to the mobile use. As promised, now on to today's leaks. It comes from the Twitter user HMS1193 and he posted a picture of the review guide for Alder Lake. Apparently Intel is telling reviewers that for the best gaming performance you should disable the E cores. They even try to make it more compelling by telling you that the CPU will use 20% less power and be up to 5 degrees cooler than if you don't disable the e-course. This most likely has to do with the scheduling, something Zen 2 also had its problems with in the beginning. If a game, for example, runs an important thread on a E core instead of a P core, performance and frame times could be impacted. If this turns out to be true, it will have huge implications on the product tier list when it comes to gamers. The main difference between the i9-12900K and the i7-12700K is that the i9 has four more e-cores, but if you should disable them for gaming anyways, why even bother? For 5 megabytes more cache and 200 megahertz more clock speed? The same is true for the 12600K. Even today, most games don't scale very well beyond 6 cores and 12 threads. With the e-cores disabled, the 12600K will be even closer to the i7 and the i9. And it gets even better. The i5-12500 and 12400 are supposed to come with 6 p-cores and 0 e-cores at all, which wouldn't be an issue if you're a gamer. Why even buy a i5-12600K if you're disabling the e-cores anyway for best gaming performance? I really hope this doesn't turn out to be true as it would completely shake up Intel's product stack. All we can do now is wait and see. Reviews will go live in about a week from now on November 4th. That's all of my thoughts on today's presentation. If you enjoyed this video or found it interesting, please leave it a like and see you next time.